Borodabab, and Enuatad Amab, our Esperith clan. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. It's really good to be with you for collective worship today. And you probably noticed that I've come out to one of our churches. I don't think I've ever recorded worship from this church before. I've come down to the village of Redwick. Now, lots of you may know Redwick. Perhaps you've come to the hall or to the pub or to the church, perhaps even been um, out and about exploring the coastal path with one of your family. The church here in Redwick is a favourite of mine. Um, it's a really lovely place to be. It's also very quiet and very peaceful, but we're also very fortunate to have lots of visitors to the church here when they're out and about. But I've chosen to come to Redwick today for a very special reason. That's because this church is dedicated in memory of St Thomas, St Thomas the Apostle, one of Jesus's followers, one of his disciples. And last Sunday we were celebrating the life of St Thomas in the church's calendar. It's what's known as our patronal festival. Unfortunately, I was here on Sunday morning in Redwick to join with our local congregation in giving thanks for, but also thinking a little bit more about the life of St Thomas the Apostle. And one of the questions I asked the congregation here was why do they think that this church is dedicated in memory of St Thomas? There are hundreds of saints the church could have been chosen to be dedicated in memory of. And I often wonder why Thomas in particular was chosen. The reason I wonder is that poor old St Thomas has sometimes had a very bad press from the history books because he very often would ask quite awkward questions. There's a couple of occasions in the Bible where Thomas asked Jesus quite difficult questions or asked for proof of something. I think Thomas was one of these people that needed to ask questions to have a conversation, but also to see for himself before he'd accept anything. And part of our story today is just part of the life of St. Thomas and something that happened to him. So I'm going to read it from part of the Bible. But just to give you a little bit of background, as I said, St. Thomas was one of Jesus's disciples. He was one of the people who'd given up his job, who went to follow Jesus on his very special adventures. <coughs> Excuse me. And Thomas would have gone with Jesus wherever he went. He'd been there when Jesus did some of those amazing miracles that we hear about in, in the Bible. When Jesus said some of the very important things, Thomas would have been there with him. And St Thomas would have been with Jesus at the first Easter as well, there at the Last Supper, probably would have been somewhere nearby on Good Friday when Jesus was crucified, although I suspect too scared to have got too close in case he was arrested as well. But Jesus, um, Thomas wasn't with Jesus on the first Easter day when he rose from the dead. We don't know why, um, he may have been off doing other things, Perhaps he'd been gone back to his family or to his friends because all of Jesus' disciples were feeling so sad about Jesus dying. But it was on that first Easter day that the risen Jesus appeared to his disciples and told them not to be afraid because he was with them and he'd be with them forever. But as I say, Thomas wasn't there. But all of the disciples were so excited about seeing the risen Jesus. They were talking about it. They were thinking about what would happen in the future. And poor old Thomas, I think, was feeling a little bit left out because he hadn't seen Jesus for himself. And you know, he had to wait a whole week until the Sunday after Easter, until he was with the disciples again and Jesus appeared to them. So this is a little bit of the story. Thomas wasn't there on that first Easter night, but he heard what the disciples had seen, but he wouldn't believe it. Unless I see and touch his wounds myself, Thomas said, 
I'm not going to believe. A week later, the disciples were gathered together again. Jesus, Jesus appeared to them and he said to Thomas, here are the wounds in my hands, in my side, in my feet. Put your hands where my wounds were. But Thomas recognised the risen Jesus and he said to him, my Lord and my God. I always think it's a little bit unfair that poor old Thomas is remembered for his doubting, his questioning, rather than for all the good things that he carried on doing. Because what I think it was that Thomas had lots of questions, he had lots of doubts, but I think he was also very honest. And instead of trying to hide those questions, those doubts, he talked to other people about them. He'd ask the questions of people. And sometimes people find that quite difficult. But I think Thomas is a very special saint because he teaches us that we can be honest about our questions. That it's good to ask questions because it's how we learn things. It's how we find out things, isn't it? I'm sure lots of you are very good at asking questions in school because it helps us to learn. We sometimes have to tell people what we're not quite sure about Perhaps other people can help explain something or perhaps reassure us. And I think that's what Jesus did on that, that day when he appeared to Thomas and his other followers. He recognised that Thomas had questions, but he was being honest. And Jesus gave him the opportunity to touch his wounds that he still had. But Thomas didn't need to. As soon as he saw the risen Jesus, he said to him, my Lord, and my God. He recognised Thomas, uh, sorry, Thomas recognised Jesus for who he was and that he'd risen again from the dead. And you know, from that experience, Thomas went on to become one of the great saints of the church and do lots of really good things for God, travelling a long way to tell people about God and about his love. And I think Thomas can be a good example to all of us. That if we have questions, if we have doubts about things, it's very often good to talk about them. We can talk to God about them when we pray, sitting quietly, thinking about the questions we have. Or we can ask other people, our families, our teachers. We can even talk to our friends about them because those are really good and healthy things that we do. So this week I've been thinking a lot about St Thomas and about his example, and hope that you might be able to do that as well. And as I said, one of the things I really love about the church here in Redwick is how peaceful, how quiet it is. So I'm going to encourage all of us just to be quiet for a few moments, that we can centre ourselves, perhaps feel God with us, or perhaps just enjoy a few moments of quietness. And then I'm going to say our special prayer for today as well. So let's just be still for a moment. So let's just think about the questions that we might have. Perhaps the times when we're not sure about God we offer those things to God. We pray that we'll be aware of his presence with us. And so Gwethion, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember that you are always with us, that you're ready to hear our questions, our doubts. You want to show us that you are with us and that you love us. Help us to think about you today to learn more about you, to grow together as your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we say our special prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening. Um, I look forward to when we all come back to school in September, when I'll be able to come into school and see all of you, but I'll also see you at some of our end of term services in a couple of weeks' time when you're going to come to the church, so it'll be good to be together again. And if ever you're out with your families and you're in Redwick, do pop into the church and have a look around. It's really lovely. Um, if you look at the outside of the church, you'll see something called a flood mark, and it marks the height of a flood that happened um, several hundred years ago. It's called the Great Flood, when a lot of this area was um, flooded by a huge wave that came along the Severn Estuary. And if you look at the mark outside of the church, you see it on the wall. It, it comes up to about there on me. Now, I'm nearly six foot tall, so you can imagine that was a huge flood and a lot of water. And that happens hundreds of years ago. People still come to look at that flood mark today and think about the history of this area. And Redwood Church is also um, uh, special because um, during the Second World War in, in the 1940s, um, it was bombed. Um, some um, aircraft that were carrying bombs were on their way back from Newport. And one of the bombs dropped on the church here and it was um, very badly damaged and couldn't be used again during the war. But thankfully it's now been rebuilt and it looks really good. So it's good to come and to visit and to find out a little bit more about the church here. But when you come, Think about St Thomas as well and about his questions and his doubts, but how he became a really good and a really firm follower of Jesus and a great missionary of the early church. So Diocavawa Thro, thank you for listening and have a good day.